Hey, we're gonna go ahead and start this one off. This video shows the borders and populations of each country in Europe for every year since 400 BC. And it looks like the Achaemenid Empire is the largest, so before Philip of Macedon dies and Alexander starts conquering up all that land. Whoa. Macedon expanded and contracted within the span of seconds here. The chart on the left had the country going from number 11 to number one to, where is it right now, number five? Number four, very quickly. The person who sent in the video said it's gonna be similar to the one we watched on World War II Every Day with Numbers, something like that for the title. It was a while ago, but I think it's just gonna be map and then info on the side. Actually, let me look at the map to make sure I know what I'm looking at. Norseman Finns. Okay, the year is 320 BC. Iberians, Gauls, Berbers, and Macedon, oh, adding Germanic peoples, will be the top five countries by population. There's no way that I'm going to be able to mention every event that happened these years nor do I know them all. So please feel free to help me and fill in some of the blanks into the Hellenistic period. Punic Wars. The Seleucid Empire held on to their number one spot of country by population for quite a while before Rome just overtook them. I don't know what becomes of them for the next hundred years, give or take. At least until Pompey comes around. I'm not positive what year that is. If you know, please tell me. Meanwhile, Rome is Pac-Manning this land. Oh, there go the Salicids. So somewhere around 60 BC? Rome pushes into Britons. I think we're somewhere near the peak of the Roman Empire, maybe just past. There are names on this map that I don't recognize. Who are the Quadi? Where is that? They sit in modern day Hungary, Slovakia area? Or the Burgundians? Although their location on the map, they're probably Germanic peoples. I don't know their story. And does that have anything to do with what later becomes the region in France, Burgundy, the wine? The Cheruski, I think I've never heard of.
Is Rome being dominant? Rome took a hit. They're gonna start dividing soon. It's the 4th century, and the Huns are invading Europe. The way the Visigoths just moved across this map has it looking like they were playing chess. Modern day Ireland has entered the chat towards the end of the Roman Empire. Modern day Britain breaking up Wessex and Mercia. There's a lot going on here. Bulgaria just migrated south. Asturias is on the map. Do you call it the Emirate of Cordoba or the Caliphate? I thought it was a Caliphate, but I guess it could be that it was both during different times of history. I'll keep my eye on the map <laughs> to check for that. I'm not sure. That's one I'll have to look up after this. Frankish Kingdom is large. First we see of Scandinavia. Hmm. If you have information on what they were doing before 800, please add that. Holy Roman Empire is coming for the size of the Byzantine Empire. Barcelona's on the map, so other Spanish cities are going to start to be carved out. Badajoz, Toledo. Rus is so large, I just know that Genghis Khan is going to come in here and take at least top five country by population slot. I also know it's not pronounced Genghis Khan, it's just, just how it comes out.
Everybody welcome Portugal. England has united. Mongol Empire. Number one country by population. Oh, wow, that was fast. It's already number three at Golden Horde. Holy Roman Empire is number one, France number two. Ottomans are gaining land. The Hundred Years' War? I missed it as <laughs> I was looking. I missed the Hundred Years' War, or at least the beginning of it, between France and England. So I guess the bubonic plague over at that time too. Because I was looking at the Ottoman Empire and the last standing piece of the Byzantine Empire. Everybody welcome Istanbul! I feel like I'm calling a football game. Muscovy became Russia. Um, religious wars. The Thirty Years War, rather. France is number one, but they're about to go through it with the revolution and Napoleon. Russian Empire. Almost to the 19th century, or excuse me, the 20th century. World War I is going to start now. USSR. World War II. The USSR is going to break up. And then I guess Czechoslovakia just did, so Yugoslavia. That's it, wow. That was a lot. Not gonna lie, it was very difficult to look at the year and the chart and all of the changing colors on the map. I'm going to link you the channel who uploaded this. The name is French, so I'm going to keep it on the screen here for you to look at instead of trying to pronounce it myself. I'm feeling very grateful that I took European history in school, although humbled to realize just how much of that I can't remember. And there were likely small battles that I didn't learn about at all. I could also just be saying that because I don't remember. For example, hold on, let me find it. I have to enlarge my screen. The Kingdom of the Vandals, which migrated from the Mediterranean to northern Africa before it was gobbled up by the Byzantine Empire. I want to know the story there, so I'm going to have to check that out after this.
There were a lot of moving parts here. The video was very blinker, you'll miss it. So if you have anything to add or you want to correct, feel free to do that. It's curious to think about all of the people involved over the past 2,000 plus years, which seems like a really long time, but in the grand scheme of Earth, it's not at all. <laughs> I'm also wondering what future generations are going to be taught that this time period is. We're living it, so it's hard to think about all of the implications for the future. Anyway, leave your thoughts on this one. I'm going to go through some of the older history videos that we've covered on the channel and take some of the books that apply to any of the years that we watched in this video. I'm actually reading a book on Napoleon now. Not gonna lie, it does get a little bit dry at times, but as far as books on Napoleon, it's one of the most interesting I've read, so I'll make sure to link that for you. And the rest can just be resources, because I don't think I let a history video pass without mentioning how good Dan Carlin's hardcore history is. If you haven't seen his channel, he has really long-form videos. Also, when he's on a podcast, I make sure to catch that episode. A good history teacher makes such a difference. It's also because of him I know it's not pronounced Genghis Khan. I just don't remember how it's actually pronounced. Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan? All I know is I'm wrong. <laughs> Another good resource is Khan Academy. Another good teacher. I don't know what the other courses are like. For example, I've never taken the math course, but there's a world history course where a lot of these events get brought up. And it's everything from ancient Mesopotamia to current day. That's a good way to learn if you don't like just listening, because besides the lectures, there are also quizzes to take. But if you have a history channel to recommend to me, let me know. I'll try to link some of my other favorite YouTube history channels down below. And that's really all I've got. So thanks for watching with me, and I'll see you next time.